So since I'm buying my first tractor and today's delivery day, uh, I, I thought back to like when I was little and stuff and I remembered I had all these uh, tractors probably just like every other wannabe farmer farm kid has. Since I'm buying a John Deere 8110, I was thinking, I wonder if I have an 8110 uh, size. I know exactly what you guys are thinking. Like, what am I doing watching a 22 year old play with his toy tractors? But, uh, it was an 8410. If any of you guys have an 8110 model or know of one for sale, I'd buy it just so I could put it on my desk. But, anyways, let's go take delivery. There it is. It's here. So it's actually the next day and I'm gonna run and uh, we got a gas station about two miles away. I'm gonna put winter blend diesel in it, just fill it up three quarters so that way it has some winter blend when I put it in storage. Uh, and we got, in a couple days I'm gonna take it over to Buddy's place and we're gonna store it there. Uh, he's got big doors, something that can actually fit. And so for the winter, for the next two or three months, it's probably gonna sit there. I would have put fuel in it yesterday, but by the time you stare at it for two hours, that sun gets going down pretty quick there. So. Okay, tell me if you guys noticed this, but kind of ever since I was a little kid, I always noticed that, and it could be all tractors, and I've pretty much only been in John Deere tractors, but when you get inside the cab, there's a smell to it. There's a John Deere smell, and I was reading the manual, and I noticed the smell was on the manual, so I started sniffing the manual, and I was like, man, this smells good. Uh, maybe John Deere sprays a certain scent in them? I have no idea, but if there's a scent out there, and I die, Please tell everybody to put that scent in my, uh, my casket because it smells good. So I haven't done a full detailed walk around tour of that tractor, so we're gonna get to that. But first I wanted to talk about one quick thing and I, it's, an, it's an important thing. It's I should talk about it more on this channel pretty much. But essentially I'm more of, this 8110 is like probably too big for 210 acres and there's only 140 tillable right now uh, but the thing is is in the next year I'm looking to buy more land and buy more land after that I was like I have the budget to kind of buy something a little bigger I'm gonna expand the operation uh, and I pretty much for now just want to farm the ground that I own so so that's kind of the reason going a little bigger and then with planner trying to go to a 12 row planner for 150 acres is probably a little too big but then once you get into like three or 400 acres it's like that's that's probably good size and then you can run a six row head with that planner so so i bought this planter out of uh northern indiana and you guys are gonna think i'm crazy uh for doing it but i saw it online saw it on tractor house and uh and called the guy up had a really good conversation with him for about an hour and then i was like hey uh could i facetime you guys in a couple of days and we'll go over the tractor these guys were awesome uh it was a father and son that owned this previously and they used it as their planter tractor and they bought it with 3300 hours in 20 man was it 20 2012 or 2013 so they were second owner of this tractor and uh they just use it for planting so as far as pto it does have the big uh big 1000 pto so it's three point quick attach uh it's a cat three three point um draw bar here it doesn't have a hammer strap and i'm to be honest i'm not sure if i need one for a planter or what uh, i'll have to figure that out it does have four hydraulics here 450 weights on the rear uh which is probably nice in there now one thing it kind of needs is tires uh 
especially on these probably. But these are worn down pretty good. I mean, they're still totally usable for what I'm doing, so it should be fine. And then the, the uh, outside duals are definitely a lot better here. It does have flashers. The 2000 model does have a different style of flasher up here. It's just, uh, I think it's like straight out and then it's got just a giant dot on the end. Um, it does have extended fenders. At first I wasn't too big a fan of these. I was like, man, I, I might kind of take those off, but I'm, I kind of like them, especially when we're driving around in this mud. So I think I'll just keep them on there. There's no really need to take them off. Uh, front fenders. It does have the 34 inch front, uh, front tire here. We've been getting the floor all muddy here. I need to clean it out, but we're probably gonna be in some mud for a while. So it's a 16 speed power shift, uh, which so far driving down the road, I, I'm getting used to. Get your mile per hour and uh, gear selection right there as far as what gears. And that's four reverse, 16 speed forward, four reverse. Uh, I don't have the key with me, it's in the truck. I was gonna tell you, it has 4,900 hours on it. Probably should have mentioned that. Of course, front wheel assist, uh, four hydraulics. I gotta read the manual. Uh, three hydraulics right here, I'd assume. And then the fourth, I'm not sure where the fourth is here. It might be back here. Ivy, yeah, here's the fourth one. Now it does have a green start harness on there, which the previous owner installed. So that's one thing I gotta uh, figure out here. It has the John Deere Auto Track 2000 or 200, I should say, which is right here. I've also heard a guy call him on YouTube, the knee knocker. Uh, and then we have the other steering wheel here in case we wanna take him off. It was just a really well taken care of tractor. Uh, the guys that used it were pretty proud of it. It seemed like they kept it in really good condition. We're taking the trip to the gas station, fill up. Yeah. So we're trying to get Spencer used to the tractor just because might as well get him used to it, that way he can learn, watch other YouTube videos after trying it a bit, so. It's a little harder than farm sim, I would say, but I think uh, I got some good virtual practice before this. So this tractor comes in at 183 horsepower, and I think the 8410, the biggest of that series, is pushing over like 230 or 240 horse, so. So my, th my thoughts with this tractor, and of course I always want your guys' thoughts too, is, uh, run a John Deere 1760 12 row. Unless you guys got other recommendations, uh, I think that's what I'm searching for and looking for. It seems simple. Uh, I just want a simple planner for the first year. And then that, you guys haven't seen it yet, but the uh, 88 acres I'm buying, we close here, I think it's like a week or two. Uh, that is ready for corn. That already has nitrogen on it. Uh, the guy put P and K and he put lime on it, so it should be good. I'm gonna soil test it just to soil test and kind of know my farms a little bit. And then the 45 acres, it's 45 till bull, 120 acres. That was in corn last year, but since I'm doing corn on the 88 acre farm, I'm probably gonna just go corn to keep everything simple on that farm for the first year. That way I can go all corn. Uh, if I, you know, all the nitrogen programs, if I ever want to side dress, will be all the same for those farms and then and then herbicide will also be the same for those farms. So it seems like just go all corn that year, keep it simple. Uh, with that being said, I gotta get in hydrous on that 45 acres there. I was talking to a, a farmer down there who I trust really well and, uh, and uh, he was kind of giving me some advice and farms the same type of soils and he's like, if you have corn, what you're probably gonna wanna do is just VT it, just a vertical till it, chop up those stalks just a bit and then that in hydrous will be a little better to pull through. So one thing I was thinking, uh, that'd probably be nice to get just to have around. It's just a vertical tillage tool, uh, something like really small, like 20 foot or as small as you can get because I don't think I need that big and 8110 should be just fine pulling a 20 foot uh, vertical tillage tool, but just lightly, lightly chop up those stocks. So that's the plan going in this year. Uh, and then as far as... Hello, this is Grant. Dan, how you doing? Good, so right now I'm in the middle of uh, filming the video showing off the new tractor. Yeah, no, 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 you're totally good. You're totally good. I, I, just, got off the, I just got off the phone with the seller and he, he called me for a bit and uh, that's awesome that you buy a tractor from somebody and they call and spend an hour on the phone and, and kind of walk you through some stuff. So that's, that's really nice uh, for sure. Or would you put the living space inside of the 60 by 120? 
Because I could go shorter and then put the living space outside of it. Obviously, connect it. Give I, I don't know to me unless you're worried about you know aesthetically it might it's I've never had anybody say Pat that building's way too big I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I've also never had anybody say the door is way too big okay right? yeah. so yeah. Yeah. door yeah. sizes and all that. Well, after checking with the builder, we ran a couple errands and uh, went to the FSA office and got to do all that fun paperwork and uh, get all signed up with there, get the farm program and conservation stuff going because there is CRP acres on this farm. Uh, but me and Spencer are gonna we're gonna head out and uh, we're gonna mark off this building just not because we're building or anything, but just because we want to see size on where we think would fit best. So. Essentially, we're thinking now the size of the building, 120 by 60. I probably went over this already, but uh, he's gonna go stay in the opposite corner there. And uh, so essentially where Spencer's at would be the corner of the building. As you can see, the lay's fairly level through here. The other point is probably right there. Spencer, me, and then uh, somewhere right here. What's nice about this is it all slopes down around here and it all slopes down towards the river. Slopes down there and then slopes down there. Over the past two weeks, I've talked with probably five or six different building companies, or at least called them. Uh, like probably four got back to me and I've talked with them and we've got a couple of quotes coming my way. We've sat down and talked with some companies and uh, they're building like crazy. The earliest out of all of them, I always ask this question, that they would get started on a project out of like all the companies I've talked to is June timeframe. So it's like, yeah, that, that'd be nice. And that, that's expected. It's not like they're gonna get in the next two months and start working. But uh, companies are definitely delayed and backed up and commodity prices are soaring, lumber's up 3X, steel's up. You know, is it the inflation moment that everybody's been talking about with all this stimulus? So so it's, it's kind of tough starting from scratch, especially with infrastructure. Usually if you're doing it and you're on a really, really tight budget, you'd probably rent different places around the area and stuff. And I'm new to the area. If I grew up in the area, it would be, uh, it would be a different story. I'd probably know a lot more people to be able to rent buildings from. So I'm putting up one giant shed that does everything I need to as far as living quarters, shop, cold storage. Now here was the original. We're planning on going to 60 by 120 uh, shed. So 60 width, length 120, 16 foot tall, but I'm changing that to 18 foot because to get 18, to get 16 foot doors, you have to have 18 foot ceilings. And I think 18 foot's going to be better. It's not too much more expensive. So we're going 18 foot. And this is all just plans. This isn't finalized or anything like that. So we switched it around a little bit. Uh, went a 25 by 40 living area and then potentially adding on a second story to this living area. And then what that does is that makes the living area uh, smaller width wise, but then the uh, shop took a little more room up. So I went a 35 by 40 shop and that'll be by 18 actually. So uh, the door is gonna be a lot bigger than 14 by 14. I think I gotta for sure go a 16 foot door and then it definitely needs to be wider. And then a 60 by 70 cold storage. That'll be 18 foot. So like I said, I'm building one building for the farm and this building's gonna do everything. So I want this to be, to be perfect. I don't really wanna screw it up, of course. I don't wanna have to build any more buildings. So thanks again for watching. I can't wait for, uh, I can't wait for spring to come to come. We're probably 90 days away, 90 or 120 days away from uh, putting seed in the ground. And once it comes, there's gonna be a lot more videos on this channel. So thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it and uh, see you guys.